Hey friends, happy Friday. Um, I'm coming to you today to continue our story, How to Steal a Dog. Yesterday we ended at the end of chapter three. We learned that Georgina thinks that she has found a dog to steal. So she thinks that her plan is going to work out well. So we're going to continue starting with chapter four today. And let's see how her plan works out for her. I sat in the car behind the steering wheel and turned the envelope over and over. I read the messy handwriting scrawled across the front. Mr. and Miss Hayes. I put it up to my nose and sniffed. I could actually smell my teacher, Mr. White. Sort of like soap and toothpaste and coffee, all mixed together. I pressed the envelope against the window and tried to read the letter inside. I turned it every which way but I couldn't make out a single word. I was pretty sure I knew what it said though. Stuff about me, about the homework I hadn't done and the math test I had failed. Probably even about how ugly I looked all the time now with my wrinkled up clothes and my dirty hair and why was I so sleepy every day? And sometimes I didn't have lunch money. I bet the letter said how Mr. White had tried to call mama, but our phone didn't work. I bet the letter said all that stuff. I rolled down the window and looked out at the weeds beside the road. It was only April, but it was already beginning to feel like summer. Lucky for us, the nights were still cool though, because Mama made us keep the windows rolled up all night long. She said it was because she hated bugs and flies and things getting in the car, but I think it was because she thought some bad guy might reach his hand in our car. I had been glad when Mama said Toby was going to go to work with her that afternoon, but now I was bored. I guess I should have gone over to Luann's like I said I was. I could hear kids over in the school playground. I wish Mama hadn't parked the car so close to the school. What if someone knew me, I knew saw me sitting there? What would I say? Besides, I didn't see why we had to keep moving around so much. After two nights in the same place, off we went to some old new spot. Now we were parked too close to the school and farther away from Whitmore Road. How was I supposed to keep an eye out on that dog if we kept parking so far away? I climbed into the back seat and stuffed the envelope from Mr. White way down inside my trash bag of stuff. Then I pulled out my notebook and turned to the page that said, how to Steal a Dog by Georgina Hayes. I wrote April 6th in the margin. Then, after step one, I skipped two lines and wrote. Step two, when you find the dog you want to steal, keep an eye on it for a while. Here are the rules to remember. Make sure the dog really doesn't bark or bite. Number two, if there is a fence, see if the gate is locked. Number three, decide whether or not you can pick the dog up or maybe you have to have a leash or a rope. Number four, check to see if there are any noisy people living next door or across the street or something. I closed my notebook, climbed out of the car and locked the door with the key I wore around my neck. Then I set off for Whitmore Road. When I got there, I stopped for a minute to check things out. The street was quiet there was nobody outside except for some guy working on the engine of his car. Inside one of the houses, a baby was crying. A sprinkler sputtered in circles in one of the yards. I walked up the road toward the house. I hummed a little so my face wouldn't look so nervous as I felt. When I walked by the man working on his car engine, he didn't even look up. I strolled along beside the hedge that surrounded the brick house. I quit humming so I could listen. It was quiet in the yard. I glanced back to make sure no one was watching me. Then I poked my head over the gate to look into the yard. Birds flew away from a bird feeder that hung from a hickory nut tree. The front door of the house was closed and I noticed something. I hadn't seen it the other day. One of those little doggy doors so the dog could go in and out of the house all by himself. 
I figured that was a good sign. It probably meant that the people who lived there were gone a lot, but they still cared about their dog. Then I remembered my rule about checking to see if the gate was locked. I reached over and lifted the latch. Nope, not locked. Suddenly a squirrel came scampering around the corner of the house and scrambled up the hickory nut tree. Not far behind it was the black and white dog. He dashed to the tree and peered up into the branches with his tail wagging about a million times a minute. Hey there, I called to him. He sat in the leaves under the tree and cocked his head at me. His face was white with little black spots, like freckles, and black fur around one eye like a patch. His ears were floppy, but when he looked at me, they perked up. But the best thing about him was that he looked like he was smiling at me. The sides of his mouth curled up and his pink tongue hung out. Hey there, I said again. His doggy smile got bigger and his tail wagged harder, swishing leaves back and forth. Come here, little fella. I reached over the gate <clears throat> and snapped my fingers at him. He came trotting right over. I stooped down and stuck my fingers through the chain link fence. He sniffed and then he licked me a couple of times. How you doing, little fella? I said. He cocked his head again and looked so cute. I looked at the house. The front door was still closed and it seemed like nobody was home. I scratched the dog behind his ears and he leaned his head against my hand with his eyes closed. He was wearing two collars. One was a dirty plastic flea collar. The other one was green with shiny rhinestones and a little silver tag shaped like a dog bone. What does this say? I pulled the dog a little closer and squinted at the words engraved on the tag. Willie, it said. I turned it over. On the other side, it said, Carmela Whitmore, 27 Whitmore Road, Darby, North Carolina. Under that was a phone number. Willie, I whispered to the dog. His floppy ears perked up and he did that dog smile thing again. My name is Georgina, I said to Willie. Just then, that squirrel made its way down the trunk of the hickory nut tree, and Willie dashed off to chase it again. I stood up and looked around. Way at the end of the street, two kids were riding bikes. The man who had been working in his, on his car was sitting in a lawn chair smoking a cigarette. Uh-oh, I thought. What if he saw me? I headed back up the street trying to look like a normal person instead of a person who was thinking about stealing a dog. I kept my head down and concentrated on keeping my feet from running. I didn't look at the man when I passed him, but I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke. When I got to the corner, I finally let my feet run like they'd been wanting to, all the way back to the car. When I got there, I unlocked the door and climbed in behind the steering wheel. I put my hand on my racing heart and laid my head against the seat. I was really starting to wonder if I could steal a dog. I'd never stolen anything in my whole life. Luann did one time, though. She slipped a pack of M&Ms right into her coat pocket, but not me. How in the world was I going to be able to steal this dog? But then I looked around me at all the stuff inside our car. The styrofoam cooler full of icy water and plastic containers of tuna salad. The trash bag stuffed with clothes and shoes. The milk crate on the floor with paper towels, shampoo, a flashlight, and a can opener. I looked into the back seat on Toby's side of the car. His blanket all smushed up in a ball. His pillow. His Scooby-Doo pajamas. And then... There was my side with all my special things jammed into a plastic bag instead of sitting out on my dresser like they used to. My horse statue, my swimming medals, that little stuffed bear that I got in the Smoky Mountains. I hated every inch of that car. I put both hands on the steering wheel and pretended like I was driving. I drove and drove and drove, the whole time sending my bad thoughts to my daddy, forgetting tired of it all and making us live in this car. And as I drove along out of Darby, out of North Carolina, on and on and on, as far as I could go, I felt better about what I had to do. 
I had to steal that little dog, Willie, no matter what. Chapter 5. I watched Luann and Liza Thomas walking to the bus after school, their matching blonde ponytails swinging from side to side. They carried their ballet slippers in their Darby Dance School tote bags. Instead of getting on the bus and taking my usual seat beside Luann, I had to wait for Toby so we could go to the laundromat. I watched everybody get on the bus in their perfect clothes so they could go home to their perfect bedroom. They put their school clothes away in real drawers, not trash bags like we do. Then they'd go to soccer practice or ballet class, not to the laundromat like me. I blinked hard and stared down at my feet just in case I looked as miserable as I felt. The toe of my sneaker was wearing out and I could see my blue socks starting to show through. When I heard someone running, I looked up to see Toby racing towards me, his hair flopping down in his eyes. Hurry up, I snapped. I've been waiting for like an hour. I got on the bus, but then I remembered I wasn't supposed to, he said. Oh, great, I thought. I bet Luann and Liza had themselves a good laugh about that. I bet Liza said, how come Georgina and Toby aren't riding the bus? Then what would Luann say? Please, please, Luann. I closed my eyes and tried to send my thoughts across the parking lot and into the school bus window where Luann said, Please don't tell Liza we live in a car. I, then I hurried up the sidewalk toward town. Toby trotted along behind me, whining for me to slow down, but I didn't. We headed on over to Montgomery Street, where Mama had parked the car near the laundromat. I unlocked the trunk and tossed my backpack inside. Then I stood on the bumper of the car so I could reach way back in the trunk. I pulled a corner of the carpet away and took out the envelope Mama kept hidden there. I thumbed through the money stuffed inside. It sure looked like a lot to me, but I guess it still wasn't enough to get us a place to live. I took out five dollars and jammed the envelope back under the carpet. Then I gathered up the dirty laundry and locked the car. Let's go, Toby. I stuffed all the clothes into one washing machine. If we don't use two machines, I said to Toby, we'll have enough money to buy us a snack. On the way out, we checked all the coin return slots for money and found two quarters. Then we went over to the grocery store and bought some saltine crackers and sliced cheese. We went around back to the alley and sat on the warm asphalt to eat. Listen, Toby, I said while I peeled the plastic off my cheese. We need to find some kind of rope or something to tie that dog's collar. Toby nodded as he squished a piece of cheese into a little ball and popped it into his mouth. Where can we find a rope, I said. He shrugged. Darn it, Toby, I said. If you want to help me, you've got to come up with some ideas too, you know. I can't think of everything. Okay, he said. Why don't we buy some rope? I rolled my eyes. We're trying to save our money, not spend it. We need to find some rope for free. Toby looked around him at the piles of cardboard boxes beside the dumpster. Maybe there's a rope back here somewhere. I got up and peered into the dumpster. Just more cardboard boxes. No, I said, I think we're going to have to wait till trash pickup day. Then we can look through the stuff that people leave by the road, okay? Okay, Toby squished another piece of cheese and then smashed it between two crackers. Let's go put our clothes in the dryer, then check that dog out again. When we got to Whitmore Road, I motioned for Toby to be quiet. We don't want anybody to notice us, I whispered. We made our way up the road toward the big brick house. When we got to the corner of the yard, I could hear someone out front. I tried to see through the hedge, but it was too thick. I squatted down beside the fence to listen. Get the ball, Willie, someone said. I was pretty sure it was the same woman we had seen there the other day. I could hear Willie making happy little yip noises. Then the woman would laugh and say stuff to him. After a while, I heard the wooden front steps creak and the screen door slam. I looked at Toby. 
I think she went inside, I whispered. Let's go see. We tiptoed to the gate and I peeked into the yard. The woman was gone, but Willie was sitting on the front porch. When he saw me, he came bounding down the steps and over to the gate. Hey there, Willie, I whispered. He pushed his nose through the gate and licked my hand. Isn't he cute, I said to Toby. Yeah, Toby put his hand out and Willie licked him too. So when are we going to steal him? Shh, I smacked Toby's knee. Hush up, you crazy person. I looked around us. The street was quiet and empty. I could hear a radio somewhere in the distance, but I didn't see anyone. We have to wait till everything is just right, I said. That lady has to be gone. I nodded toward the house. And we need some rope, too, remember? After we get the rope and steal him, where are we going to hide him? Toby said. Darn! I hadn't even thought of that. I couldn't hardly believe how stupid I'd been. I'd made all those plans and hadn't even thought about where we were going to hide that dog. I looked at Willie and then back at Toby. I haven't figured that part out yet, I said, pretending like it was no big deal. You got any ideas? Toby shook his head. I frowned. Well, we'll have to think of something. That night, I propped the flashlight up on the seat next to me and tried to do my math homework. Toby's snores drifted through the beach towel wall between us. You know, I used to be good at math, but it seemed like now I wasn't. I gave up and took, my pur took out my purple notebook. I opened to the page that said, How to Steal a Dog by Georgina Hayes. I wrote April 7th. Then, after step two, I wrote, Step three, get ready to steal the dog. Number one, Keep watching the dog to make sure he is right, the right one to steal. Number two, if you need a leash, find some rope or something. Number three, figure out where you're going to hide the dog. I chewed on the eraser of my pencil and stared out the window into the darkness. Number three was a big problem. I wish I could ask Luann to help me. She always had good ideas about stuff. I looked down at my notebook again. I guessed I was just going to have to figure this out for myself, unless some miracle happened and Toby gets an idea. I closed the notebook and watched the moths fluttering around the streetlight outside the window. Maybe stealing a dog wasn't such a good idea after all. I propped my seat up on the seat in front of me and frowned at my bare toes. My party girl pink nail polish was wearing off and I didn't have any more. I guess it got tossed out with all of my other stuff. We can't take everything, Georgina, Mama had hollered at me when Mr. Dieter kicked us out of our apartment. One bag, she said in a mean voice. That's it. Just when I started to feel a good cry coming on, I heard Mama hurrying toward the car. I sat up and rolled down the window. Georgina, she whispered, real excited like, guess what? What? I found us a place. Really? I felt my heavy heart start to lift. Mama put both hands against the car door and grinned down at me. Her hair was damp and frizzy from working her second job in the steamy back room of the Regal Dry Cleaners. She took her shoes off and climbed into the front seat. Yep, we're moving into a house. We had only ever lived in apartments before. Never in a house. I could already see my bedroom. White furniture with gold on the edges, like Luann's. Maybe even pink carpet. When, I said. Friday, Mama examined herself in the rearview mirror. I look as beat as I feel, don't I, she said. You look all right, I said, but I was lying. She did look beat. Dark circles under her eyes, her skin all creased and greasy looking. I lay back against the seat and felt a hundred pounds lighter than I had just minutes before. i would known in my heart that stealing a dog was a bad thing to do, and now I don't even have to. I couldn't believe everything had turned out so good. And that completed chapter five. So when we come back from spring break, not that we're actually going anywhere because we're still going to be at home like we are now. Um, after spring break, I will come on and read chapter six 
and seven for you guys. Um, I hope that you are able to relax some next week. I hope that you're enjoying the story so far, and we will pick up where we left off. Bye, guys.